Alrighty, welcome to another four on four vintage cube draft. We're using Sam Rolf's cube uh, as we have been for for a bit. We're probably going to do that for for a little bit of time um, before switching back to frogs, but we'll do both. In any case, I'm going to take a Minskin Boo, which is not not my favorite first pick. It, it is very good. It's the best card in the pack. It is better than Memory Lapse or Path or Baleful Strix or Dungeoneer's Pack, which is a three mana artifact where you can uh, pay two tap and sack it to gain the initiative, a treasure, and three life. Next up, well, I, I have a bit of a policy of not passing Atroxa. I think Atroxa is just too good this early where I could pick up, you know, to go along with Minsk and Boo, maybe Natural Order is great. There's also, uh, of course, any Animates, Flash, Through the Breach I just passed in that pack, but there's a lot of ways to, to put an Atroxa into play and they're all very good. Plus, the next best card is Misty Rainforest, which would be good. A green fetch in Minsk and Boo is a great start. But I'm going to take a Troxa, passing Misty, Season Pyro, Oliphant, K Command. Yeah, a bunch of Jun stuff. This squad is myself, Eomatic, Terabad, and Janara. Great squad. Battle against DZY, Yan, one of the original Magic streamers. Namor Squats, Tom Martell, and a Raging Tilt Monster. I already said Tom Martell, but it's, uh, that's a different person, just, just to be clear. Raging Tilt Monster is a separate person than Tom Martell, despite... You know, the obvious. Uh, next up, we've got um, a bunch of stuff. Huh. There's Prismari Command, which I really do love Prismari Command. I think it's just the flexibility of blowing up an artifact, killing a small creature, and then looting or making treasures is really strong. It works pretty nicely with Atroxa. There's also, however, Wall of Roots, which is, a I don't think, good enough to take here. Renin 6, which... Having a second red green planeswalker this early could be decent. Red and six goes well with strip mine, wasteland, and fetch lands. It's also days. Days is a very good card, but not one I can take here. So I really think it's either Prismari Command or Ren and Six. I don't think uh, I don't think anything else here is jumping out at me. Prismari Command's good if I end up in uh discard like a shallow grave type deck and it can help fix mana i i, I feel like prismari command will do what i want here mm, this pack has a fire covenant which i like birds of paradise that that's not wall of roots birds and wall of roots are very different and here i'm going to take the birds just per, birds into minsk and booze grade it can help cast a trox it can help cast prismari command whereas wall of roots only adds green mana and i have already a bunch of other colors i do like fire covenant a lot too there's definitely a world where i went like Minsk and Boo, Misty Rainforest, Season Pyromancer, Fire Covenant, but I, I'm going to take Birds here. And probably take Bayou now. It feels like I'm doing a lot of colors. Bayou can help cast Atroxa or reanimate spells, which I'm actively looking at. Questing Beast isn't bad, and definitely like that, that Jund mid-range deck would want the Questing Beast over the Bayou, but I feel like Atroxa is broken enough that I'm willing to take a little bit of risks to try to get Atroxa going. This pack doesn't have anything I really want. Don't run a green-white duel all that much. It can help cast a Troxa. Not a draw seven deck so much. I, I might take Mana Confluence. I'm playing a lot of colors and it's an untapped land. I think that Mana Confluence is probably fine. Oh, wow. That's a late Prismatic Vista. I will take that over a Taiga, which would also be pretty appealing in Xander's Lounge. Okay, Prismatic Vista. Now, I feel pretty good about my mana situation. Having two five-color lands in a bayou this early, pretty good. So, feeling like there's a lot of directions I can go here. And, yeah, I don't really want, like, Knight's Whisper or anything like that. It's a shame to give up Taiga, but the Vista is just so much better. Like, I could imagine a configuration late in pack three where it's like you've got a bunch of fetches and Taiga works better, but here I don't have anything like that, and... This is any color of mana as opposed to just two, though granted it's not two at the same time. So I am looking for through the breach, sneak attack type stuff, natural order also I would definitely snap up, reanimate like shallow grave would be good, would definitely speculate on flash as well if I saw it. So there is a lot of ways you can... You can get a Troxa onto the battlefield, and once you get a Troxa onto the battlefield, you usually end up winning. Okay, so this pack is pretty good too. This pack has Toxic Deluge, which is a good card. Not so much when I have a Birds of Paradise that implies more things. Snapcaster I'm definitely not in the place for. I don't think Unmarked Grave is good because it gets non-legendary, so it's not helping with a Troxa. Honestly, I might just take Primeval Titan. This could be a Primeval Titan deck. 
we are trending in that direction. If I get a natural order or sneak or things like that, I don't think I care about Snapcaster too much. Yeah, all right. Not really looking to pick up a Magda here either. So let's just take prime time and uh, see what develops here. If that threw the breach wield, I would be pretty happy. I don't think that's very likely. That card's pretty good, but it's also a narrow card. There are configurations of packs and drafts where any there's no one who really wants through the breach or the person who would want through the breach doesn't see it in a timely place. Fortunately not. Okay, so no one took this. So again, you take the initiative, gain three life, draw a card, and make a treasure. This card does not seem bad to me. There's also Baleful Strix, but I'm kind of curious if Dungeoneer's pack is good. I mean, it's five mana, but you get a tra card and a treasure. All right, I'll try it. I, I don't think uh, giving up on Baleful Strix is the worst. Okay, so now I could take Devoted Druid. I actually should take Devoted Druid here. There's also Terra Sunder. When you're both black and green, Terra Sunder is very good. Devoted Druid does curve into all of these things nicely, though. I actually think this is a, an appropriate time for that. So I can take a red-green land that gains them a life. It taps for colorless or taps for red or green and they gain a life. The main thing is there is Punishing Fire, so that's a two-mana instant deal two to any target. But whenever the opponent pays, gains life, you can pay a red to bring it back. Or I could just take Rex Sage, or I could take Ovenwald Oddity. They're all pretty valid here. I'll, I'll take the Grove. I'm interested in, in experimenting. This deck looks like it's going a little bigger than Oddity. The Oddity is very good. And I actually would play Punishing Fire if I picked it up. Plus a red-green duel is something I, I do actually just want. So, And it's better than a Pain Land generally. There are some decks that would rather me take damage than the opponent gain life, but this deck's definitely looking like one where I'd rather the opponent gain a life than me take damage, I think. My life total matters more. I don't think I'm going to play Pia, Kiran, Nalar. Definitely not, don't care about Tabernacle. That card's just not playable. Uh, the, I, I mentioned this in other videos, but the way this cube works, if you 3-0, you get to change a slot, and someone added Tabernacle, and no one's ever put it in a deck. I'm going to take Spellseeker. Not because I have anything, but because it's just too good to pass. Oh, Questing Beast Wield. That's good for not only because I get a Questing Beast, and now I don't feel too bad about passing the Olvenwald Oddity, but also because it's a pretty good sign that I got a Questing Beast with two cards left. I think Condemn is better than Settle. Okay, one more card here. Then you get on to pack two. So, oh, last pick, Fallen Shinobi. Okay, it's not 0% that I end up being able to play that card. All right, besides power, would like some Atroxa stuff. Hmm, best I can do is absolutely nothing. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, this pack is just horrendous. I don't really want to first pick Fiery Confluence. I might just take Preordain here. There's also Llanowar Elves. But the way I see it, just the monocolor elves are not really that good, and Preordain is kind of busted. So I think I might just take Preordain here. I've got a lot of good fixing, so and I'm going to want blue mana for the Prismari Command anyway. Plus, elves might even just wheel. I don't know. Uh, this pack has Shardless Agent, which is cool. I added this one to the cube, actually, on one of my 3-0s. Um, which would be okay here, but I like it more in decks that can actually use the artifacts. Renin 6 is gone, but Wasteland is still pretty good. Might just Wasteland. This is the kind of deck that can utilize Wasteland fairly nicely. There's a Gitrog Monster. 5 mana, 6 Death Touch. Each upkeep you have to sack a land. Or sack it. You can play an extra land every turn. One of your lands goes to a graveyard draw card. I actually wouldn't mind Gitrog Monster in this deck. I'm going to take Wasteland first, but I've got Prismatic Vista. I feel like it's got some potential here. These have been kind of weak packs, too. Like, what am I passing this pack for Martel? It's just going to maybe take Shardless Agent or KCI if he's doing artifacts. Haven't seen much in the way of artifact stuff, so I'm guessing Tom is up to something like that. He does like, like those decks a lot. Um, this pack has Intruder on. This is why you, you got to make sure to use the right art. The person who made the link didn't use the right art. Um, not really a big Intruder Alarm fan here. I do kind of like Delighted Halfling. I've got some good legends to cast. Making them un uncounterable is pretty nice. And then that leaves Sylvan Sakura Tribe Builder as wheels. There's also Dak Faden, which is a pretty good card. But this, and there's also a uh, Reanimate here, Death. Hmm. I could take the reanimate because I have one discard outlet and I'm looking for more, but I kind of feel like Delighted Halfling. I, the mana dorks that make actual colors of mana, I'm pretty big on. 
and I think Delighted Halfling is decent. Good chance to wheel one of the green cards in this pack. Tom's going to take Displacer Kitten because he's obsessed with that card, which means someone takes Life Death, Sylvan, Dak, Pestermite, Restless Spire, and lands. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. If nothing wheels, nothing wheels. I'm fine with that. I also got to keep my eye open for Fallen Shinobi. If, if I get a couple more low drops and the mana situation is okay, I think sneaking in a Fallen Shinobi... It's pretty nice. Birds of Paradise is actually a great combo with Fallen Shinobi. Okay, well, this pack has a Grist, which I love. And it has a Wooded Foothills. That's the only cards I could consider. And I think I'm going to just take Wooded Foothills. Wooded Foothills is a Jun land right now. But we'll probably get to become more. And uh, I just really like having fetch lands and being able to... Just get all the associated combos in. Oh, Currency Converter is a discard outlet. Not terrible. It's also nice with Prismari Command. Once you're already discarding, that card actually gets a lot better. There's a blue-green untapped duel, which is just fine. There's Frantic Search, which is also a decent discard outlet. But I think I'm going to take the Converter, because I think that's the kind of card Tom would, go, would slot straight into his deck. And... Now that I have two discard outlets, I feel a little better about trying to play an animate if I see it. I could just incidentally be playing that. I would like to get this Fallen Shinobi in if I can. We're not quite there yet. Passing up on Baleful Strix uh, did lead me down, you know, away from Fallen Shinobi, but uh, Dungeoneer's pack was pretty appealing. It does enter the battlefield tapped. You do have to wait a turn. It's a pretty significant thing, but I'm just envisioning a curve of turn one birds, turn two Dungeoneers pack on the play, and then they go like two drop, and you just go crack it, play my thing. Eh, it seems pretty decent to me. I think the way this is turning out, given that I got a really late Fallen Shinobi, I guess I'd rather have a Baleful Strix, but it's kind of close. So passing up on a Frantic Search there. And that was really the only other card. I think I would I would rather play Frantic Search than Faithless Thing. It's generally a better card. Okay. So this pack has some things. Agatha's Soul Cauldron doesn't really do much for me. Not really a Lotus Petal deck. Miscalculation could be good because I'm trending towards blue-green. And Miscalc's good. Suspicious Stowaway is another discard outlet and is good at fighting over the initiative. And it's good with Fallen Shinobi. I don't normally make this pick, but I actually think I'd rather have Stowaway. There's also Anjay's Ravager. I haven't really drafted a good Madness deck. I do think that that could be cool, but this actually looks like a good Stowaway deck, funnily enough. And this pack's all black and white cards. I don't really want any of these cards. I guess I could take, like, Collective Brutality as another discard outlet. That should be relatively easy to cast. I don't want Imperial Recruiter or Sahili because I'm passing Thomas Sahili. I don't really like that. Maybe I just take that because I think I'm not going to play this. I don't really... I guess Shieldred Edict actually might play as just a removal spell because this deck is could use a removal spell. All right. I actually like that a little more. I just don't like Collective Brutality all that much. Okay. So there's an Exhume as a, as a reanimate. There's a Crucible, which works well with my two fetches and my Wasteland. There's an Upheaval. I don't like passing that. I actually feel like this could be a Crucible deck, though. Especially with a Primeval Titan as well. Exhume is just not the kind of reanimate this deck wants to play. All right. Let's take Crucible. I guess I could just take Mystical Tutor now, because I don't really want to play Thirst for Discovery, Robber of the Rich, Green-White Talisman. I'm not that likely to Mystical Tutor, but I'll keep it in mind. Oh, Gitrog Monster. Okay, we could be doing Crucible stuff. There's also Zurin Orb, but Fast Bond is the hardest of those to get. I don't think I'm going to do that, but I think I, I this actually could just be a Gitrog deck. All right, let's look, let's try it. I like the idea. I hope if I get Fast Bond and I could have had Zern Orb, I'll be kind of annoyed, but uh, Gitrog Fast Bond's also pretty good. Okay, I kind of like, I kind of like this direction. I've got a, there's a lot of cards I could get that would make this deck a lot better. Let's just put it that way. Uh, Dryad is interesting with Crucible and Gitrog Monster. There's also Nurturing Peatland, which is kind of good with both, but I think I'd rather have the play extra land cards first. Oh, and then that's a late Crater Hoof or Endurance or Nissa. Hmm. I don't think this deck needs Crater Hoof so much. 
I think I'd rather take Endurance. That card can be really good. Oh, wow. All right, I'll take that Frantic Search over Sanctum. Frantic Search here, I've got a lot of combos with it. I don't want to pass it to Tom, second of all, but or first of all, even. But second of all, now I've got a bunch of extra combos. Uh, I'll take the Heart Evidence. I don't care about Canonist. Because now I have Frantic Search plus... Uh, the Currency Converter, I have it in case I get an Animate. I have it with Crucible. No, it seems pretty good. Also, it works with Gitrog Monster. Discard a land from your hand. You draw a card still. So here, we open Comet, Stellar Pup, Teferi, Skull Clamp, Dark Depths, Exploration. This actually is looking like a pretty great Exploration deck, but maybe I'm just supposed to Skull Clamp here. Skull Clamp works well with... Bird, Stowaway, Devoted Druid, yeah, and like, kind of like Currency Converter stuff. Hmm. I don't really want to first pick an Exploration. That does not make me very happy. There's also Comet. So I have Prismatic Vista, Mana Confluence. You know, Comet is just a busted card. Maybe I just take that. And then if Exploration wheels, I'll be pretty happy. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. There's Crop Rotation. <laughs> There's Leovold. This could be a nice little Leovold deck. Don't think we can afford Force of Negation. No. Leovold is pretty burly. I don't have a reason for crop rotation, though. If I get Strip Mine, it's probably a little late to get Strip Mine at this point, but if I did, that card would be sick. But yeah, let's just take Leovold here. We're just five colors. Now I need to take lands over basically anything. And I think we're just casting a Troxa right now. All right, that's fair. I've got a lot of mana sources. If I can pick up, I mean, if I can pick up a fast bond or a strip mine or a natural order or an animate or, I guess I would put show and tell on this deck. I don't really like it when I just have a Troxa. Let's just say there's a lot of ways I can go here, and uh, I'm hoping that, hoping at least one of these paths kind of kind of pans out, since uh, I, I could use a little bit of help here. Not that I like have a bad collection of cards. It's more like I have a lot of things that could work together, and I I, I need the the solutions here. All right, so here's the punishing fire, but I'm the only one who wants it. I assume I'll wheel it. If I don't, so be it. There's entomb to put a into the graveyard, but I have a lot of ways to put a trox in the graveyard. That's not really the issue, and I don't have strip mine, so I don't think entombing for that entombing for wasteland is not quite good enough. There is Green Suns, which looks pretty good. I have Green Suns hits at every point. I think I might just Green Suns. There's also like Duress and Snuff Out, but in like Gold Span. But no, no, we're just going to Green Suns here. This looks like a very good Green Suns deck. Oh, there's another Fetch Land. There's also a Stomping Ground, but uh, this is a White Green Black Fetch, which is pretty good. And then maybe I'll wheel the Stomping Ground. There's Thespian Stage to go with that depth and crop rotation, but I don't think any of those are... Not, I'm not going to get all of them back. This pack has some good cards in it, so I'm hoping that uh, hoping that we can get something there. Ooh, Oracle, Lotus Field, Shallow Grave. Okay, how good is Shallow Grave? Shallow Grave Atrox is pretty nice. Shallow Grave, per Primeval Titan is also pretty solid. And I have Currency Converter, Frantic Search, Prismari Command as discard. All right. I'm in. I'm into shallow grave. Oh, and suspicious stowaway. And then, I don't think Lotus Field's going to table or proving ground or oracle or troll. But impulse, stern scolding mana. Yeah, there's a chance one of those tables, and the the proving ground would actually be really nice here. But whatever. I still have to take shallow grave here. I, I have to have at least one out to just like combo off. There's also spell seeker if I want an extra copy or mystical tutor. But I don't think I'm there yet. I do have Green Suns to get a Troxa, but that's just basically casting Troxa, so you're not really getting a benefit out of that. I also wouldn't mind, like, picking up a Noble or Ignoble. Oh, there's Fast Bond. Oh, man, I could have had the Zern Orb. It's okay. Fast Bond's still going to be really good here, I think. So we're taking that over Vamp Tutor. It's a good pack, but Fast Bond, okay. We don't have the Corsair of Crufix either. I'm looking for some life gain. I guess a Troxa is my life gain. Because, look, Fast Bond plus... Gitrog Monster can go pretty nuts. Fast Bond Crucible with Fetch Lands can get you a lot of lands into play. So there, there, there are some things there. Okay, Watery Grave doesn't work with other fetches, so it's just a blue-black land, which is not bad. 
Chain Lightning is a fine burn spell, but I don't think I want to take that. I just don't have enough early red, I don't think. Um, I mean, it's okay. I should probably just take Watery Grave, though. I feel like the, the mana in this deck is going to be more of the issue. Oh, man, I, I would swap Gitrog for a Zurin Orb, though. Okay, so Badlands makes it so Wooded Foothills gets black, but it already does off Bayou, so that's just, again, a land. There's Godless Shrine, which makes Windswept Teeth into black, but it's already playing black, so that doesn't actually help any of those. I don't want Infernal Grasp. I, I have enough removal. Do I want Utopia Sprawl or Arbor Elf? Mm, I don't have a lot of... I have, what, two, not, two green non-forest lands... I, I kind of feel like I'd rather just Arbor Elf here. Actually, I'm just going to take Badlands. I'm just going to take another land. Okay, Exploration came back. So did Dark Depths. But honestly, I think this is such a good Exploration deck and Fast Bond deck that I should just take that. And Crop Rotation's back too. But, oh, there's an Unburial Rights. Oh, you know what? This actually could be a totally fine Unburial Rights deck. I think Endurance is probably leaving at this point. Yeah, I've got a lot of a lot of combos with that. Oh, Duress came back. There's also Titan of Industry, but I think with those three big creatures, I'm feeling pretty good. Duress is just a great card. Okay, so right now this is 14 lands, and I want to play like 18 lands, so I need to cut uh, four cards. I guess I could probably cut Dry to the Elysian Grove at this point. Oh, Stage did come back. I could have had Depth Stage Crop Rotation. Well, I am going to probably just take it here anyway. Oracle came back too? Okay. Okay, I'll, I'll take that. And then gifts. Oh, I have rights. All right. That all kind of came together. <laughs> let's see, let's see how we can how we can get this kind of like wrapped up. I think I think that there's I mean I'm gonna have to make some cuts, but it kind of feels like we've got something going here. Let's try to build this and find out. Um we'll, we'll, we'll call this a Troxa Lands. Let's see. Mm. Interesting. Man, I wish I took I wish I took the, the depths. Exploration's really good in this deck though. I'm not that worried about killing them. <laughs> Have to find me a Dungeoneer's pack. Okay, so right now we need we need a bunch of land here. Let's see. How many forests do I need? Oh the I already see some cuts I could make. Let's see. Actually, I want to go Tempest again. I've been liking Tempest Lands. So if I play four forests, I'll have four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten green sources. It's not bad. One swamp leaves me one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, plenty of black. And one mountain gives me one, two, three, four, five, six red sources. That's okay. I assume one planes is gonna be enough as well. Because that gives me one, two, three, four white sources, plus birds and currency converter and all that. For casting Atroxa or flashing back on burial rates or casting Comet, two islands probably is two, Three, four, five blue sources. I kind of want a third island, actually. Okay, because uh, I have Preordained, Suspicious Story, Frantic Surge, Gifts. Fallen Shinobi actually looks kind of nice here, too. I mean, I need to cut a bunch of cards. Uh, all right, let's start by cutting Questing Beast. And I think Devoted Druid. I think we'll, we'll focus on the one-man accelerants. I think I'll cut Duress. I'm not sure about that, but I think that's okay. I think I have to cut Prismari Command as well, because that's like a double splash. Dungeoneer's Pack is probably also cuttable. This deck doesn't have quite enough removal to be doing all that. And Fallen Shinobi is based off of not quite enough stuff either. It feels like I've got bigger things going on. Okay. And not playing Spell Seeker that could get Shallow Grave, Shielders Edict, or Preordain. Yeah, that's fine. Same with Mystical Tutor. Mystical can get Gifts, Frantic Search, Shallow Grave. 
it can get so it can get gifts for the gifts rights combo. It can also get either either shallow grave if I have the atrox in the graveyard or frantic search if I need to get it into the graveyard. I'm pretty confident I want to play 18 lands. Yeah, I think this is what I'm going to run, and uh, I think this deck's got some cool stuff going on. Let's see, let's see how it plays out. Alrighty, before run one, let's take a quick look at what our team's working with. And ooh, Terabad's got Black Lotus Mox Pearl in a kind of blue-white aggro deck with Oriok Salvagers for the infinite combo, bunch of cheap creatures, Swords to Plowshares, bunch of Teferi's Fracture Identity. Love it. This deck looks great. eomatic has got a blue-green deck, Missing Flare and Academy, which I'm sure now is in Tom's deck, uh, with Misha's Workshop Double Moxes. All right, my teammates are doing well in power. Days Memory Lapse, Miscalc Remand, I love that sweet too. In Force of Will as well, into uh, the Kinan combo with some X's, some good stuff there too. And then uh, Janara on, uh, you know, Grixis cards with Reanimate Thoughtseize and Tomb with just like Titan of Industry to get. Rafine, Fire Covenant, all right, you know, some things. Let's see what this does. Can I get an Exploration or Fast Bond? No, but uh, I can get a turn one Birds of Paradise. I like this. All right. Let's get Bayou, I guess, is probably my best bet here. And cast Birds of Paradise. What's well, my best turn to draw? Fast Bond still. Fast Bond is just an awesome card. I also wouldn't mind if Nam played a tapped land. Oh my god, whatever this is, I don't like it. Uh, okay, that's not ideal, but I guess it could be worse. Land. Unfortunately, I'm going to let Magda hit me here. But if Oracle can hit a land, if if somehow I can cast Oracle next turn and Oracle can live for a turn, then I'll feel pretty good about getting this Atroxa into play. I kind of feel like my bird is going to die, though. Oh, Fable. Okay, that's pretty good, but... All right, let's go land Oracle of Moldaya into Currency Converter. I don't really like that one. So I'm just going to play my my land and pass. And I really just want Oracle to live here. Discard two lands. Oh, Fable's so good. Because now Nam has three new cards. Yeah, I didn't think that was going to be the case. All right. Um... So, assuming I get a chance to block, which is not an assumption. Okay, I do get a chance to block. I guess I'll block Oracle on the Goblin. The problem is, if I... Let's say I didn't block, I go to 13. Nam can't kill both creatures, but we'll just kill the Oracle. And then I won't be able to cast Trox next turn anyway. If I block there, you kill the bird. I can play Currency Converter. No, it's not going to be fast enough. So I'm just going to block here and trade. Because I am going to crack the fetch. I don't really want Nam seeing my top card for no reason. Okay, let's just get planes here. And, wow, nice draw. This has been a tough start here. Um... So just play Grove and Pass. I also have not actually drawn a spell yet, so that hasn't helped. <laughs> but certainly, uh, turn on Magda, turn two Fable, turn three Jite Equip plus Dark Confront is quite the start. Like, had I drawn an Exploration or Fast Bond, I'd have an Atrox in play right now, and then that would have been maybe good enough. We're not equipping Jite. That's not a great sign for me. What else could I draw here? Gitrog Monster would actually be a pretty good draw still. I mean, it'll kind of depend on what this next play is. Goblin Crater Maker, that's what got revealed off Dark Confidant, sure. All right. All right, Comet. I need a Comet of a Lifetime. Go to six. Oh, we hit to six. Now we get double activation. Go to seven. Okay, we're going to nug something for six points of damage. I guess it's probably got to be the reflection of Kiki Jiki. All right, go to five, go to five, go to five, go to five. Oh, we went to five. All right, go to six. 
Okay, now we get something back. Uh, I guess I'll get birds since I have got... All right, go back up to five. Five, 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 five. Oh, we're nugging again. Uh, let's nug the dark confidant. Play birds. Okay, Comet killed two things and got a bird back. That's really not too bad. I, w I wouldn't have minded some squirrels alongside it, but you know, this is this is this is good. Because now we're going to get to play a Troxa here, which obviously there's a good chance we still are dead here. But we're going to be at 8, 7 after the Vista, and having a Troxa in play. Okay. That's, you know, I can live with that. I can live with that. It, we've got a chance. Oh, no. Never mind. Uh, all right. Does, do we have a chance still? I'm at six, I'm at five. So I go to five, I cast a Troxa. Next turn, you animate the Lava Claw. I block and I'm really at 12 and I'm taking six, eight, 10, yeah, whatever. They're gonna see They're gonna see the cards in my deck anyway, so it doesn't really matter too much. Uh, let's just get another forest. Play an Atroxa, and I need to get Creature, Planeswalker, Land, Instant, Sorcery, Enchantment. So Enchantment, Planeswalker. For Instant, I think I'll take the Shallow Grave. For Sorcery, Green Suns. For Creature, Gitrog, Monster. And for Land, I'll take the Badlands. All right. Well, I drew six off Atroxa. I assume I'm still dead here, but... We'll see, I guess. Yeah, all right. I thought that the most likely outcome was I was just going to show Nam more cards, but I don't really care. Okay. So playing against red, black, mid, I don't really want duress against that. Uh, endurance, questing beast. Is there anything that's like actively bad? No, I think this is fine. I'll keep the Wasteland for now. Wasteland is just really powerful with Crucible and Gitrog Monster, so I don't think... And there's also, I saw at least a Lava Claw reaches, so I think it's worth it. Endurance is also like a decent just ambush creature. But I don't know that I want to cut anything for it here. Yeah, I needed to either be on the play that game or... No, I was on the play that game. Nam, Nam just started with a turn one Magda. That's what it was. Basically, I needed one more mana or my bird to live one more turn or whatever. You know, Oracle not to die immediately. But that was unfortunately... I thought the most likely outcome. Fables, Fable makes it pretty hard to miss on like... That you know, you play the fable, and then the following turn, you you discard two cards, you draw a card for your turn, you draw two more off fable. You see a lot of cards to play something against, you know, whatever it is I'm doing. Okay, and I think just hope that against this deck, I draw fast bond exploration more than birds. All right, I'll keep this hand. Still, I'm, I, you know, I might have trouble if I never draw Fast Bond or never draw Exploration. Like, th those are two of the cards that really make this deck pop. All right, please don't turn one Mog to me again. If Nam starts every game on Dark Ritual, it's going to be tough. We'll hope that's not the case. Strip Mine, you took my Strip Mine. Dang. All right, Fast Bond, Exploration. No. I mean, I don't really mind too much. Strip Mine is just us both skipping our turn. That doesn't bother me too much. Mm. Play this and pass. I'm gonna get, get to, I get to play Leovold next turn, kind of no matter what. But what I do will, or what I discard will really depend on what gets played here. All right, so let's draw a card. I think here, I'm gonna discard Shieldred's Edict. And the reason I'm doing that is 
I know I'm going to get to play Leobold this turn, because this can go get Bayou, or Badlands actually, but I think Bayou, oh, I meant to get Bayou, well, whatever, <laughs> it worked out. Uh, I wanted another blocker, so having a 2-2 a two -two rogue token off the currency converter is pretty good, that way if, if you kill the Leobold, then I get to make a blocker for Magda anyway. I don't want Magda just generating a ton of treasures for, for no cost. Mm -hmm. Vindicate targeting Leobold. All right. That works for me. And do you want to cash in Magda? You're not really getting better, but if you have removal in hand, maybe you want to wait because next turn you'll do that. All right. Mm -hmm. And on my next turn, I have a couple options. I don't have white mana, so I can't gifts for the whole combo. Though if I draw a white mana, maybe I'll do that. All right. All right, we'll block. Let's see what we draw. Dryad. Oh, interesting. Interesting. Um. I think what I'm just going to do is go Crucible, just play my Forest, and play Birds. And then this way, next turn with Crucible in play, I can play Dry to the Elysian Grove, play Wooded Foothills out of the Graveyard, play Mountain out of hand, or play another Foothills out of the Graveyard, or whatever I choose. And then I have uh, enough mana to just Green Suns for Atroxa next turn. Also, I mean, if he kills my birds, then so be it. In fact, I could also just go Dryad, land, land, pass with gifts up and set up the gifts that way. Though I have enough mana that I could just gifts for four cards. I could just gifts for Atroxa Rites, Gitrog Monster, Primeval Titan or something. It's just like, yeah, I'm going to get some creatures. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll see what Nam does this turn. Obviously, there's a lot that could go wrong. My Crucible can get blown up. My hand can get mind twisted, you know, all that sort of thing. Playing against black, red, mid, mid on a bunch of mana here. Monastery Mentor, okay. Plus Dark Ritual, okay. What you got with that Dark Ritual? Like a Shieldred or something? All right, Storm Count 3. Okay. Huh, Imperial Seal. That's interesting. And Goblin Crater Maker. Oh, blow up Crucible. Oh, no, kill the bird. Oh, I like that. I, I understand why you'd make that play, because that Crucible doesn't let, give me extra mana. Hmm, now it does. Um... Yeah, I don't think Nam's going to do that again. So I've got three more targets here. Let's go get all three. And 14, let's see, 13. Um, one short of getting a Troxa. Hmm. Because this doesn't get anything else. I have all six of my targets in play. I could also play Dryad and leave up Gifts Ungiven. Or I could play Dryad and Green Suns for four. I think Dryad leave up Gifts sounds pretty good to me. And I don't really need to play the land, I don't think. It doesn't add anything for me. All right, let's just pass. Because this also uh, gives me a nice block here. Snuff out. All right. I mean, I guess I can't do anything about that. Do we tutor for snuff out, or what did we do? Hmm. Okay, I guess so. And I'm taking nine here down to four. All right. Yeah, I guess I can't stop that either. Let's go gifts ungiven here. And next turn I have enough mana. I could Green Suns for Atroxa if I wanted. 
Mm. I also have currency converter, so I can also discard anything I want as wheel. I'm a little, oh man. I'm a little worried, I guess. Getting on a Troxen plays like the baseline. I know I can do that. What, what can I do that's better than that? Like if I get Atroxa, Unburial Rites, and you put Atroxa, I could get Shallow Grave. If I get Atroxa, Unburial Rites, Shallow Grave, and, and like Frantic Search, you give me Atroxa, Unburial Rites, and then I go discard Atroxa, cast Unburial Rites. Could also get, I could get Gitrog Monster. I don't think I really want that. Mm -hmm. I mean, green sunning for Atrox is decent. So if we get an Atrox and play I'm effectively at 11, yeah, I'll be fine if I can block. Obviously, if, if Atrox dies, but Vindicate has already been used, so that's something. Maybe I don't get Shallow Grave. Maybe I just get Atroxa, Unburial Rites, Primeval Titan, Frantic Search, and I'm given Atroxa. I'm not given Frantic Search. I could also just get something else and there's Green Suns for Atroxa. I mean, that doesn't sound horrendous. I don't really want to get a bunch of good cards uh, that are just going to get... Because I'm going to... I think I'm just going to Green Suns for Atroxa, and then... So I think maybe I just get some lands. Hmm. The Green Suns makes this complicated. No, I should get Unburial Rights. All right, let's get Unburial Rights. Primeval Titan, Frantic Search, and Planes. Or maybe just instead of Planes. Oh, I guess I get Planes no matter what in Atrox. So yeah, let's just do this. Because Planes gives me the white source and I have Crucible, so I could just get the... Getting the Planes seems like it's pretty good. I don't really care too much about the prime time. Maybe I should have gotten Gitrog. I don't know. It doesn't really matter too much. So here, you might as well put planes in hand. Well, planes gets to be played for free off Crucible, but you might want to put Atroxa in hand to make it a little harder for me to discard. Like you make me have to use the currency converter. But also if I do that, I'm just going to go planes, cast Atroxa. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then I'll have two mana left over, plus I have fast bond anyway. And I'll be able to play like another blocker or something like that. So we will, we will try. We will try. All right, put cards in my graveyard. Yep, those go into graveyard. I draw. Exploration doesn't do much for me. Let's go planes. Atroxa. And. Didn't hit the shallow grave. I hit a suspicious stowaway. Oh, well, I got instant creature land. Oh, that's a really bad Atrox, actually. Uh, wasteland. And get rug monster. Play this, go to three. Wasteland Lava Claw. Green Suns for one. Get a Delighted Halfling. Yeah, I'll go to two. I mean, I'm just dead to a lot of things anyway. Wasteland that. All right. Let's see what Nam can do without black mana here. Burn me out, yes. Otherwise, if you can't burn me or kill Atroxa, then I, I, I assume I win on my turn. I get to hit with Atroxa and gain seven life, and I think, and then play like a bunch of stuff, and I think that's just going to put me quite, quite far out of reach. 
So I feel like I've got pretty good outs. Actually, instead of getting Primeval Titan, I should have just gotten Wasteland. N never mind. <laughs> Atroxa hitting Wasteland was pretty good there. I think that 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 would have been a, a better play. Okay, no attacks, no plays. Let's draw. Um, let's just attack with a trucks so for nine here. Play the Git Gitrog Monster. Actually, yeah, yeah. Let's play Gitrog Monster. I'm at thirteen cards. Cast Frantic Search. Discard Exploration and. Guess suspicious stowaway. Untap three lands and exile those things. I don't really. I guess I could play a land. I don't really want to take damage, so I'm not going to play more. I'm going to play Oracle. And I'll just pass the turn. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of all in on Atroxa here. If Atroxa doesn't doesn't work out, then then I'm not going to win this game. I mean, I'll have the Gitrog monster, I guess, as backup. All right, we got game two. Let's see if we can if we can convert here. All right. Uh, I mean, Prismari Command would be nice. I'm just kind of worried about casting it, I guess, is my biggest issue. Don't think I want Duress. I wonder, I still want to kind of wonder if Endurance will be good. Shieldred's Edict also just seems kind of mid, but killing an early Magda or something does seem like it could be good. All right, let's go Fast Bond. Fast Bond, just a big part of all of this, you know. Okay, we'll just have to mulligan this. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I will keep this and put Unburial Rights on the bottom. All right. Don't love this hand, especially against a turn one play. Esper mm -hmm. Sentinel. Um, well, that's annoying. I don't really want to give Nam an extra card here. It seems so bad to do that. But what am I, what is my other option? I guess I can just cast a turn two preordain. God, as for Sentinel, such a beating sometimes. It's funny because like I've got a couple green accelerants that that would be fine to get Esper Sentinel, but uh, my hand is all one mana spells. All right, no plays. That's nice at least. And I'll get by you here, and I think I'm just going to cast Preordain. All right, Swamp Wooded Foothills. So I'll just put them both on the bottom. Comet Stellar Pup. Okay. Well, I don't like Strip Mine, but if it's no play afterwards, I don't care that bad. I think I'm gonna go currency converter. Drawing the shallow grave changed my plan. Currency converter, pay the one. And then I'm gonna to hope to use currency converter plus prime time shallow grave over the next two turns. Okay. Or not, or not. Well. Alright, I guess we're gonna go. Get a mountain here and then cast a green sun zenith for one. Pay the one. Get birds of paradise. All right, please don't kill me. No, it's gonna die. It's gonna die. I can feel it. No mountain, no mountain, no mountain. Well, no, no mountain still. Uh, evolve sleepers, okay. Land. Blown up my land, blown up my birds, blown up my uh, currency converter. Can I just let this halfling stick? I'll take my I'll take my 
three damage, hopefully. And then next turn, I'm probably just gonna play Comet Stellar Pup and see how that goes. If I draw a land, I'll even be able to pay for the Esper Sentinel, which I really am glad I've been paying because Nam's stuck on no red. So this is this is a really close game. All right, I kind of want to see this thing getting activated because that means that's the play this turn. All right, land. Land would be really good here. Oh, you have another play? No. Oh, Crucible of Worlds. I'm at 11. <sighs> Crucible. No, I can't. I can't make that play. I just have to play this and give Nam a card. Sadly, not miss missing a land drop and having to give give up a card is just so brutal. All right, go to six, go to six, go to six. This would be a good time. All right, two squirrels. Well, if you don't have Vindicate, then I don't hate my spot. Because if I get to untap with Comet, okay, no red. Well, this is such a close game. If Nam's best play involves putting a counter on this and drawing a card, then I feel like I'm going to win. Nam's going to go tank. Mountain Dark Ritual, Shieldred, Fable, Snuff Out, you know. Okay, that's not a that's not a red land. That's a start. That's a start. I don't think drawing with silent clearings on the menu, but that would be sick if it was. <laughs> so land on my turn would be really nice. Frantic search could also be pretty good. I'm thinking of ways to get a Titan in the graveyard for Shallow Grave. Also just getting to play Minsk and Boo could be sick. Imperial Seal. So you could you you can draw and then you can draw with silent clearing. But unless you have like bone splinters or something or bone shards, I don't think it's gonna be easy to kill the comet this turn. Hopefully this is like pumping evolved sleeper. But even that is not like crazy good. I'm kind of assuming Nam doesn't have Vindicate in hand. I could be wrong, of course. Okay, we're pumping Evolved Sleeper. Okay, I like that. Oh, into Fury. Oh, okay. <sighs> Man, okay. And that kills Comet. <laughs> all right, all right. Um, now I draw the land. All right, I guess I'm gonna go do this. This time I will pay the red or pay the pay the the cost. Put three counters on this. Pass the turn. Fury. No, we're going way too fast here. This is just going terribly for me. Yeah. It felt like we were so close, and then Fury Necromancy just ended my hopes and dreams. I mean, I guess if I draw a, prime, a land and play Primeval Titan, that's something. <laughs> Damn. Close game. Close game. We'll, we'll, we'll get the next ones. Already time for round two. Tough round one, and uh, I've got a mulligan this hand here. I'm playing against Boros Aggro. This I will keep, and just put Frantic Surge on the bottom, and I'm just going to play a turn two. Gitrog monster, assuming I draw a land here. Let's see, so it's interesting. Hmm. I think, I think I've got to just let them get one mana here. The problem is if I wasteland the Sacred Foundry, I end up in a spot where if I don't draw a land, I can't cast Gitrog. All right, if I draw a land here, I think I just win. We'll, we'll, we'll find out. Mm -hmm. Get Rog. Wasteland. Wasteland, your Sacred Foundry draw card. Pass the turn. Now you're dealing with a 6-6. Six, six and, uh, all right, yeah, I got to show my team. Just so they know what we're up against. No, we're, I'm playing against Boros Splash Underman Adventure. So that's pretty cool. But uh, th this is quite the start here. We get to upkeep, sack, probably an island here to uh, 
to draw a card. Draw a card. Draw for turn. Oh, Crucible of Worlds. I do like that. All right. Um, island, Wasteland, Birds, Suspicious Stowaway, and I'm going to smash for six here. Next turn, I could sack Wasteland to draw a card. It's like I could just basically pay a life to draw a card over and over again, but I don't really need to do that right now. I would have maybe on my next turn. Um, playing against that, I do think I want Questing Beast and Endurance to some degree. Leovold looks less good. <laughs> Magus of the Moon is kind of annoying. They do have that, but, you know, whatever. Uh, yeah, I guess I'll, I'll, I'll pass on the Questing Beast for now. But I will swap Leovold for Endurance. I think a lot better of a defensive play here. All right, well, drawing Fastbone is pretty good there. This hand I definitely have to keep. I'm going to go turn one Heath, probably just for basic forest to get out a delighted halfling. And we'll see from there. No one mana play. Oh, I just drew that. So that's also fine. So now I'm going to go turn two Dryad, turn three Comet is my plan if this thing lives. Okay, sword, please not. Cauldra, no, Skullclamp. Oh, I don't care about that very much at all. All right, let's play Dryad, land, go. And next turn, I think I'm just going to play Comet. Okay, the question is, what do I do? Oh, we have equipment to put into play already. I see. So four, five, six mana. I guess I could Frantic Search at some point. I think I'll, oh, that's not what I want to play. I think I'll just play Comet first. And... Go from there. Maybe I actually should have sacked a fetch land in case I hit the minus one ability. Oh, I got to nug the stone forge and you can't respond. <laughs> uh, take that. <laughs> That's so good. Uh, that is indeed how it works when the ability. Oh, I even missed on playing my land. I was so excited. <laughs> uh, Okay, I guess Lion Sash could be an issue, but no, we're just going to clamp it up. That's so sick. Missing playing a Watery Grave is actually like not great, but th this is still pretty good. Oh, okay. Well, I'm going to have to take a little extra damage here, but I'm going to play Gitrog Monster. Might as well make it uncounterable, though I don't think there's anything that can counter it. Sack this so I can get a forest and draw a card. And then now I have a target for Comet if I hit the minus one ability. And let's roll this. Hopefully this isn't the Nug ability. Okay, two squirrels. Sure, that's fine. And I'll play another land. Because why not? And hit for... F hit for three. I'm going to leave one back in case... I don't know, they play like a Zealous Conscripts or something. And then next turn, I'm going to sack an island to the Gitrog monster. Oh, never mind, Gitrog monster. We had our fun. Um, let's put a swamp. Yeah, planes. No, let's just get planes, actually. I got to I gotta think about Magus of the Moon. Got to make sure I'm not too overexposed to that. And now I'm going to get to Frantic Search, and maybe I'll even discard the Crucible. It's not like it's doing too much for me right now. Sadly, the Gitrog monster is done. I think this is a gold span. Oh, Athari. Well, I'm glad I left a blocker back, because now I don't lose Comet, which is a pretty big game. Because I get to chump the token here, go to two on Comet, draw. Okay, so I can Atroxa right now. Let's just start by doing this. And hopefully not, this is, that's not what I wanted. All right, well, now let's go Gifts Ungiven. And I think I just do Unburial Rites Atroxa. 
seems like that's the ideal setup here. And then I'm not gonna play Frantic Search now because I think it'll be a lot better once I have more action. And then I didn't have to tap my mana any particular way because I have the Dryad ready to go. Let's see, put these in my graveyard. Burial rights, the Atroxa. And instant sorcery, land instant sorcery enchantment creature. Okay, so enchantment, oh, definitely fast bomb. Land, I guess I'll do bad lands. And then instant sorcery creature, or whatever, other way around. But, um, guess I'll preordain here. Bottom and top. And send with the squirrel. The reason I'm not sending with the uh, dryad is if my opponent can kill the Atroxa, then I want the dryad there to block one of the Othari attackers. Okay. So next turn, I'm going to get to do a bunch of stuff. First of all, if Atroxa is not going to be removed from the board, it's going to be almost impossible for my opponent to win. You can't, as a red-white aggro deck, beat a 7-7 Flying Lifelink Vigilance Death Touch. Even if that happens, I still have Shieldra's Edict plus Prime Time here. Okay. Skull Clamping Lothari is not bad. Like, you could attack... I could block with Atroxa... I kind of don't think I'm going to. Well, I guess we'll see what they do. Sulfuric Vortex. Oh, so I can't gain life? All right, well, let's just block like this. Kill your two tokens. You don't get two cards. And next turn I get to attack back for a lot of damage. Actually, I think I just have lethal next turn. Because I get to go Minsk throw Atroxa. All right, we got our match, and that actually was just not very close at all. Let's get on to round three and see if we can close this out. All right, time for round three. I'm 1-1, one, one. Gennaro's 1-1, one, one. Carl's 1-2, and uh, Eomatic is 1-1. One, one. So we're, we're it's a close draft, and these matches matter a lot, as they always do. Playing against Tom Martell, I'm going to have to mulligan this hand, and I will keep this hand for sure. Um... I think I just put back the currency converter at this point. I feel like this hand has got other things to do. So let's just go turn one Delighted Halfling. Turn two, I might just Green Suns for a birds, and then turn three, oh, we're making a, your own Delighted Halfling, sure. Well, converter would have worked out okay there, but that's fine. Hmm. Actually, I'm just going to convert for one here. Just green suns for one. And get Birds of Paradise. Pass the turn. And I have an uncounterable Minsk and Boo next turn. We'll see if, uh, if that pans out. What do you got here? Some sort of legend. Oh, Legend of Karn. Oh, this is going to work out really well for me. Uh, you can have a Chrome Mox in your hand, I guess. I thought Tom might minus two it, in which case I would get to go Minsk and Boo kill it, but this works out pretty nicely. Oh, a Comet Stellar Pup as well. Okay. I think I'll just get white here. Play Minsk and Boo. You know what? I'm not scared of a Counterspell here. Don't think Tom has one. Counters on that. And then now I get to attack Karn for an extra extra damage. Now Karn goes down to one. You can put upheaval in your hand, but then you'll lose the Karn immediately. And next turn, <clears throat> I've got some good stuff coming. I have a Comet, or if I draw land, I could play a Prime Time. Well, the, the currency converter wouldn't have done much this game, to be honest. So then, next turn, I mean, it'll depend on what he does, but Minsk and Boo can minus two. 
can plus one. We'll see. Unfortunately, this didn't have trample or haste. Otherwise, I would be inclined to plus Minsk and Boo on it to kill it because it's a phantasmal image. But uh, I think that's okay. Let's see what Martel's got. Next turn. I guess I'd rather play Primetime because then I can go Comet plus another spell the turn after. But it, it will really just depend on what what Tom does. Also, like if I untap in a spot where maybe I can use the minus two of Minsk and Boo and draw four cards, then that obviously changes things as well. It is a little scary that Tom has upheaval and chrome mox, but if I can ever draw fast bond, it really mitigates how much damage upheaval can do. So that would be a nice one to pick up. Always is. Uh, choose one card. You can have a botanical sanctum in your hand because it comes into play tapped. I don't really care whether you, about you getting green mana, especially since I think one of the green cards Tom's playing is Oko, which he could have cast off Delighted Halfling anyway, so really not that big of a deal. Okay, you have four, up to six mana this turn. Haven't played a land and have a Chrome Mox in hand, so certainly possible to have both those things. And maybe the plus one Karn was looking for an untapped land. I don't know. But I was not, not here to find out. Tom does have 4th Ear Lingus in his deck as well. So maybe he goes like 4th Ear Lingus. He also has Displacer Kitten. I wouldn't be shocked if Tom goes like Displacer Kitten, Chrome Mox, Flicker My Karn, do a thing. I don't know. That's the kind of the kind of shenanigans he likes to get up to. So hopefully that's not the case. That, that would be a reason to keep Karn alive for sure. Okay, here comes Sahili. Okay, with Mox to make a token. And presumably something else as well, but, but we'll see. I might go Minsk plus on Boo. Okay, Icar Wellspring, make a token. Draw a card. Well, the good thing is, plussing on Boo makes it up to a 7-7, which still kills Sahili even through these two blockers. Let's see, is Tom going to exile something? No. All right, so that, that's the whole turn, presumably. All right. No. Draw. Okay, well, given that I don't have a choice, I'm going to play Comet. Again, I'm not worried about counters. My team has most of those. Let's activate Comet. Six, 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 six. Six would be beautiful. Uh, seven. Okay. Uh, plus one, plus one, but it doesn't give it trample. Because I could pump the squirrels here, which is funny. Uh, let's go... <clears throat> How much do I care about an upheaval happening next turn? I guess I, I don't love it. What to do, what to do. I could kill Sahili and attack Karn with these three. It forces the two trade there, and then Karn goes down to one. And Tom's hand right now is Botanical Sanctum. That's the only card I know. It feels like getting Sahili off the board is probably good. I can't get both Karn and Sahili off the board, unfortunately. Because if I, well, gee, that's not entirely true. If I attack Sahili with everything, or I guess I could attack Sahili or Karn with everything. Let's see. If I put Boo at Karn, attack Sahili with these three, he goes block, block, Sahili goes down to one, and then I throw that. Yeah, that actually seems pretty good. Let's do that then. And if he doesn't block Sahili at all, well, let's see. If I attack Sahili with this down to one, no, I can't put them both at one. So let, yeah, let's attack Karn, attack Sahili, attack Sahili, attack Sahili, and then I lose Minsk and Boo to the servos. Um, 
How much do I care about losing Minsk and Boo to the servos? I mean, I don't love it, but I do get to draw a million cards. All right. I feel like it's too important to get all the Planeswalkers off the battlefield here. And then this also means I get to draw four. Also, if I draw a... I was going to say, if I drew a land and a bird, I could do that. All right, let's just play a land, pass the turn. And my hand is also pretty juiced, especially since this play draws me four cards. I feel like I can lose Minsk and Boo in under those circumstances. Impulse is a fine place for, for Tom to start, from my perspective. Spending two mana on a critical turn to not do much. This looks like an Oko to me. It's going to animate the Chrome Mox, I would imagine, or the Icar Wellspring, either one. I guess you want you you more want to flicker Wellspring with the, the cat, or oh, or oh, you're doing that because you want to keep both. Okay, so you're going to kill Minsk and Boo, and then that's it. All right, that sounds fine. Upheaval's now gone forever, though. That that much is true. And there's a raging ravine. I see. Uh, let's start by activating Comet and see what's up. Oh, double activation. Yes, yes, yes. Comet. Uh, get back windswept teeth. Weak. All right, we can get a double activation. Another one, right? Right? Oh, yes, we can. <laughs> oh, Tom is not loving this. And then activate Comet again. And Nug for 10. Um, 10 damage is kind of a lot. I think I just Nug you for 10. And... I'm going to end up Shieldra edicting the Oko, I believe. Let's see. Um, I could also play Prime Time, but let's just get Dryad Lands out. So let's go attack you with everything. Mm -hmm. Not the birds. Block. Take it, Dryad, land, land, and each opponent sacrifices a Planeswalker. And pass the turn. And now I've got a Comet on eight. Tom's down to six here, and yeah, he is dead. Okay, Whew. got game one. Duress definitely good against Tom. He's got a lot of nonsense going on. I think I like Questing Beast 2 against multiple, three different Planeswalkers. Mm, kind of thinking that this Currency Converter thing might be too slow. This actually, the only problem I have with Dungeoneer's pack is Tom has a bunch of Token Makers, and I'd be kind of worried to, to do Token Makers. I kind of just want to fall in Shinobi Tom, though. Maybe I take out the Shallow Grave, and I just have the Frantic Search. The Frantic Search might still be okay. Or maybe I just take out... Frantic Search and Shallow Grave and just... I've got Unburial Rites, and then that's fine. I don't think I need Frantic Search. All right. Unless there's anything else I want to take out. No, this looks pretty good. Endurance? Didn't seem like he used his graveyard much. Prismari Command also seems nice. There's a lot of things I can target there. And maybe I just take out Prime Time because it's just on the slow side. All right. Let's try that. Hmm. On the draw here, any fast bonds? Any fast bonds? No. I think I keep this hand. This hand needs to find a card that costs one green mana. I have a lot of those cards. It can find birds, delighted halfling, exploration, fast bond, even green sun zenith. Any of those make this hand very good. As is. I have turn two Shields Red Edict and then turn four Gifts into Atroxa on turn five. That's okay. Tom is mulliganing. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Six cards. Lotus Petal, I don't mind seeing. Okay. Well, I still want to draw my green card. Uh, he, get, uh, he gets to see the Shinobi. I don't like that. All right. Green, green, green. Fast Bond. Fast Bond. No. I mean, this is going to get a forest regardless. Let's just do this. All right. Well, 
Tom is going to maybe make one more thing, and then I'm going to get to uh, Edict, the, the third path iconoclast. All right, so it's going to be his three cards in hand and two tokens versus me. Okay, I can live with that. Draw. While I still really like Duress, which sacrifices a non-token creature is going to be my first move here. Okay. Don't play Oko this turn, please. Hit for two and say go. We'll accept that. Yeah. All right, there's the Gitrog monster. It's not doing much for me. Duress, what you got? Memory Jar, Time Warp, Sahili, Phantasmal Image. I guess I'll take Sahili because it's the only castable one. Phantasmal Image is awkward. It might it means that my gifts into a Troxa plan is a lot less appealing when he just gets to immediately play Troxa 2. Okay, so let's see. I think I might not do that. We'll see what Tom does. Let's say he just attacks for two and says go. I think I am gonna gifts. I mean, I'm definitely gonna gifts. But I don't think I'm gonna give him a phantasmal image target. What else would I get otherwise? I could get, what if I got like Comet, Minsk, and Boo, and he just doesn't give me either of those? I could get Comet, Minsk, and Boo, Green Sun, Zenith. <laughs> crucible is crucible any good no green suns doesn't seem like particularly great either dryad <laughs> you could get like prismari command <laughs> Preordain, let's see, Preordain, because if he plays Gitrog Monster, I kind of don't care. Preordain, Prismari Command, he doesn't know about the Gitrog in hand. Preordain, Prismari Command, Minsk and Boo, Comet, and I'll get Preordain and Prismari Command, but I'll lose those two cards, which I don't really like to lose. Uh... Preordain, Prismari Command. Crucible just seems kind of weak. Green Sun, Zenith. Preordain, Prismari Command, Green Sun, Zenith. And I'm at 10. I could get Exploration. I could get Fast Bond. I don't really want to get Dryad. So maybe Dryad's actually fine. Or maybe Delighted Halfling. Or maybe Birds of Paradise. At that point, I kind of want to just get... Oh, maybe I get a Wasteland. Maybe that's the key. Okay, Wasteland, Preordain, Prismari Command. And what was the last one? Like, Exploration. Because then he can play Gitrog, but the Gitrog doesn't do that much for him. Or Leovold, maybe? And then he gives me Preordain. Well, this is tricky. It's just not as easy as just gift sings, gift writes sing something, huh? <laughs> oh, and maybe I just get Green Sun Zenith. Preordain, Prismari Command, Wasteland, Green Suns. He gives like, let's say he gives me Preordain, Wasteland. Yeah, all right, this this seems fine. <clears throat> weird game, weird gifts. <laughs> this is this is why I actually like gifts on Given. Like when you get a burial rights and a creature, it's cool, but it's not as fun as getting like a whole like squad of stuff. He knows about Mana Confluence and Fallen Shinobi, doesn't know about the rest. So what I might end up doing is just going like Get Rog Monster, play an extra land, cast Preordain. He goes to Phantasmal Image, Get Rog, but it doesn't really do anything immediately. And then next turn, I've got a lot of ways to 
look and find some kind of action, I think is my plan. Maybe instead of Wasteland, I should have gotten just a fetch land. Yeah, maybe. But we'll see what, what Tom gives me here. I don't know how scared of Green Suns he is. I feel like he might be scared of that card. Prismari Command obviously is there to kill his Phantasmal Image, so he might not give me that. I still kind of feel like Preordain Wasteland is like the most likely outcome. But I kind of like Preordain here because I have a lot of mana and Preordain can let me find a lot of different things. So it feels like that's probably a pretty good deal. And then Wasteland, if he draws one of his non-basics, having a Wasteland as the first land is, I think, a big enough impact that it was worth getting over a fetch land. All right. Uh, so I got Wasteland, Prismari Command, sure. <laughs> and then I drew Minsk and Boo. <laughs> After all that. Um, let's play Minsk and Boo, I guess. Okay. Yes. Plus. And then I'm just going to attack here because I don't care about trying to block. He can play... If he wants to play Phantasmal Image and copy Boo and attack my Minsk and Boo for three, then or me for three, then he, he could do that if he wants. All right, we got there. Two and one after, after a rocky start. And uh, I liked a lot of what this deck had going. Look, the Shallow Grave, like Currency Converter, Frantic Search was like the weakest part because it just wasn't that well supported. But honestly, Gifts Rights was solid despite the fact that it didn't always work. Atroxus still continues to be great. And then Fast Bond, Crucible, Gitrog Monster. I actually liked all of that stuff going on. The Oracle was good. Well, Dryad and Oracle were both good. And uh, of course, Leovold's fine. And then these two Planeswalkers, Minsk and Comet, which I'm basically splashing Comet in my Sultai deck, but <laughs> it's good enough to do it. So we started 0-4 in this draft and we were 4-5 with three matches to go. I won and... Uh, Janara's up a game, and Eomatic is up a game. So I'll, I'll, I'll see how that ends up. But uh, I did my part. I went 2-1, and uh, I really liked how this deck turned out, even though it was, a, it was a heartbreaking loss to Nam in round one. Thanks for watching as we try to put together all these cool combos, some involving Fast Bond, some involving Frantic Search, a lot of involving Atroxa. Cube is fun. I've never had a deck exactly like this before, and that's a pretty cool deck. Plus, Gitrog Monster was pretty sweet. I, I liked how that card played out. Alrighty, I'll be back tomorrow. I appreciate you hanging out with me and uh, I'll see you tomorrow for another awesome draft.